There's nothing that we love more as UFC fans than an exciting fighter. One of those fighters you just can't take your eyes off. The don't bling fighters of the UFC where the entire fight can be changed in an instant. And they're the guys that I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the guys in each division that you cannot take your eyes off that are truly the embodiment of the UFC with the entertaining fights that they put on every single time. All the way from the 125 pound division up to 265 with heavyweight. But before we get into it, make sure to like, sub to all that YouTube shit. It truly, truly does help me out a ton. Liking the video could push it out to 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 more people, even with just your singular like. And obviously subscribe because I like to see the numbers go up. Anyway, let's get right into it. Starting off with 125. 125 is actually a little bit more difficult division to kind of find a really exciting fighter. And that's kind of the bane of the division now. Where I was looking at like Pantoja. Pantoja always has pretty much exciting fights. But you can say that his last few haven't been that exciting. That Roy Val fight was not exciting. So the guy that I came out and I picked was Brandon Moreno. When you think about the Brandon Moreno fight with Pantoja, super exciting. Brandon Moreno's quadrilogy with Figueredo, although it may not have been like the biggest pay-per-view selling fights in history, all of those fights were wars. All of those fights were super fun. All of those fights were fight of the year contender type fights. So there's no way that I could do a 125 pound division and not talk about how exciting Brandon Moreno is as a fighter. He can wrestle, he can strike, he can do everything to an elite level in the UFC. And I was kind of sad when he decided that he was going to take a break, but I understand it. But I can't wait to see him back inside the UFC because he's still pretty young. He's like 30, 31, so which is crazy when you think about how long he's been in the UFC. After that, we have the 135 pound division. The 135 pound division is pretty easy for me. Who's the most exciting guy in the 135 pound division? It's Sean O'Malley. I know that some of you are going to say something else and give a different opinion, but it is Sean O'Malley. Who's the guy in the division that has one punch knockout power? Sean O'Malley. Who's the guy that's the don't blink guy in the division because the entire fight can be changed in an instant? Sean O'Malley. When we think about all of his fights, name a boring Sean O'Malley fight. You cannot. You can't name a boring Sean O'Malley fight, and that is the mark of a truly exciting fighter when he's gone up against every matchup you can go up against. He's gone up against an elite striker in Piotr Jan. We knew that one was going to be a banger. He's gone against a wrestler in Aljamain Sterling. He's gone against every single different matchup that you can go up against. And he still made every single fight look exciting. Even when he's fighting cans. When we see, you know, like Bo Nickel against Cody Brennan, he was fighting a can and it was kind of a boring fight. Sean O'Malley, even if he's fighting a can, he's going to make sure it is entertaining as fuck. After that, we have the 145 pound division. When I was talking about with 125 or 135, there's only one guy. Here, there's like hundreds of guys. Like there's legit anybody in the top 10. If you put them for this spot, I'd be like, yep, it's fair enough. It's fair enough. It's, it's a pretty good pick. The honorable mentions that I have here, the first one is Josh Emmett. Josh Emmett is underrated as a guy that never has boring fights. As a don't blink guy, probably the most powerful guy at 145, which is crazy when you have Ilya Teporia up there. But Josh Emmett legit sends people to the nether realm. We saw his care of Bryce Mitchell. We saw him against Ilya Teporia. That was a super entertaining fight. The other guy that I have is Yair Rodriguez. Yair, if he was in any other division, and I mean any other division apart from 155 probably, he is the most exciting fighter in that division. The only problem is for him, He's in the same division as Max Holloway. And Max Holloway is probably top three, top two, maybe even the most exciting fighter in the entire UFC. The main complaint about Max Holloway that people had with excitement was that he doesn't get enough finishes. But he's changed that. He's turned that around now completely. We saw him, you know, absolutely flatline Justin Gaethje UFC 300. We saw him KO the Korean zombie. So that kind of pillow hands narrative for Max Holloway has certainly gone away. And he's elevated himself up even to a new level of excitement past where he was. Because he had the stand-up striking style where he beat the shit out of people. He was talking shit inside the cage. Like, there's nothing you couldn't love about Max Holloway. One of the most lovable guys in the UFC. One of the most fan favorite guys in the UFC for a reason. And he puts on the most exciting fights. You will not find a dull or a boring Max Holloway fight. And since he's been in the UFC for like 10 years, that is absolutely ridiculous. After that, we have 155 pounds. The lightweight division is another division that is stacked. It's just stacked out of its mind with talent when we think about excitement and exciting fighters. You have obviously, you know, like Benoit St. Denis is someone that's coming up. You have Dustin Poirier. You have Connor, if you consider him to be in that division. You have Islam Makachev, the champion. He always puts on fun fights and he puts them on in kind of different way. The guys that I put down here are Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje has more bonuses inside the UFC than he has fights. He has more bonuses inside UFC than he has fights. That is a ridiculous statistic. He was one half of that Max Holloway fight at UFC 300. I know that he was the wrong half of it, but he was one half of that fight. We've seen him against Dustin Poirier. We've seen him against Charles Oliveira. We've seen him against Michael Chandler. There is no boring Justin Gaethje fights. It's because he goes out there and he truly wants to put his body on the line. Him against Fiziev last year was one of the best fights of the year. It just got beaten out by Volkanovski and Islam, and that's just because Volkanistan was four title and was five rounds. But Justin Gaethje, if you 
don't mention him in this picture at 155, you're just hating on him. And I don't know how you could hate on Justin Gaethje. There's legit no reason. And then my number one guy at 155 is the man that has the most finishes of all time inside the UFC. It's Charles Oliveira. The reason why I have Charles over Justin Gaethje is because with Justin Gaethje, we see a lot of, you know, KO artists, Sean O'Malley, Max Holloway, Yair, Justin Gaethje. Those guys have crazy power put on great fights. With Charles, it's kind of a different thing where he manages to make grappling super, super entertaining. Islam has the same kind of thing where he makes grappling super, super entertaining because it's always the threat on the ground. But Charles Oliveira, he also has that threat on the feet where we've seen him get KOs. We've seen him be in entertaining fights. And the entertainment fact for him kind of comes from the fact that he also has a weak chin so he might get knocked down and all of a sudden he's knocked down he goes to his guard and then gets a triangle and he finishes you and then he gets an arm burn and he finishes you he's one of the most dangerous grapplers that we've ever seen in the UFC. He probably has one of the most dangerous guards we've ever seen in the UFC because he's constantly attacking, attacking, attacking from his back. And if he's on top, you're pretty much already finished. You might as well say night, night, because unless you're tapping, you're going to sleep. Charles Oliveira is my number one guy for excitement at 155. After that, we have 170. 170, there is, once again, a few guys up here. But for me, I have to pick the guy that's 18 and 0 and 18 finishes. It's Shavkat Rachmanov. Shavkat is almost like if Sean Strickland got finishes. And I'm going to expand on that. I know that sounds kind of weird, but I'm going to expand on that, okay? Shavkat, you can't really remember a moment of him with like one punch KO power or this is a crazy finish, one punch KO out of nowhere. He's just kind of like this tidal wave. And he just smothers you and smothers you and smothers you and smothers you until you eventually give up. And then he's going to get a finish, whether it's on the feet, whether he's submitting you. He can do all of it. He can do everything in mixed martial arts. There's a reason why he's probably like the number one touted guy to get a title next in the UFC. If I could bet on anybody to have a title within the next five years in the UFC, it's probably Shavka. Probably Shavka. And you see it in that Jeff Neal fight where he just kind of smothers him, smothers him, smothers him. And then towards the very end of the fight, after like 14 and a half minutes in another fight of the year contender, he chokes him out. That was my fight of the year. That was my favorite fight of last year. And then you see it in the Wonder Boy fight where he just bullies him, bullies him, bullies him, bullies him, constantly pushing the pressure, 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 pressure. And then he just kind of collapses. And that's that same kind of style that Sean Strickland has, where Sean Strickland has that kind of pressure, 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 pressure building, but he doesn't get a finish. Shavkat manages to take it that extra step and also get a finish on top of it. Then at 185, we have a kind of weird one. A kind of weird one. You're going to have to hear me out for this one. The first guy I have down here is Hamza Chimaev. Kind of the same thing as Shavkat with the pressure gauge. We just bust you over with pressure and then he's inevitably going to get a finish. But for me at 185, I have Anthony Hernandez. And many of you may not even know that name, Anthony Fluffy Hernandez. He's had one fight go to decision in his entire UFC career. You would have seen him against Mark andre Barrio, against Edmund Shabazi, and against Roman Kopolov. And he's so much fun to watch. He's so much fun to watch where he's constantly attacking submissions. He's constantly a danger on the feet. He's constantly a danger on the ground when you're going into his guard. When he's got you in there, he's smothering you, putting that pressure on until he inevitably makes you give up. He's kind of like a Khabib type character. And no, he's not as good as Khabib. And I don't think he's going to be as good as Khabib. I just mean in style for style. And he doesn't do that Khabib style as well. We haven't seen him do it against people as good. I understand that, okay? Don't jump me for the Khabib take. But he has that kind of pressure smothering style on the ground that grappling where he's just going to smother you and he's going to make you give up he's going to make you give up before you tap you know what i mean he's going to beat you mentally before he beats you physically and that's who anthony hernandez is and the fluffy nickname is so funny because he's the opposite of the guy is legitimately a killer at 185 pounds one of the scariest 185 pounders on the planet one of the guys at 185 that you're kind of looking at because that division's so stacked he doesn't really get the merit that he should he doesn't really get the hype that he should but oh my God, any time that there's an Anthony Hernandez fight, I am glued to my screen. I am 100% locked in. Then at 205, 205 is another division like 155, like 145, where you have unlimited entertaining fight. You could put Khalil up here, you could put Jamal Hill up here, you could put Alex Pereira up here. But for me, I have to pick the other half of that UFC 303 co-main event. It's Yuri Prohaska. When you see his spinning elbow KO of Dominic Reyes, you kind of look at it and you're like, holy fuck. And he's just dangerous inside the cage. There's something about unpredictability that makes a fighter more entertaining. When you have a Yair that could knock you out at any moment from any kick, spinning elbow, you know, he could hit you with a roundhouse from two feet away. We saw Max Holloway talking about how they were in the clinch and he was getting hit with head kicks. That's what Yuri has. He has that same kind of ability and he has this kind of grit and will to just be able to will and push through different things that most fighters aren't. I love to see a good comeback 
when Yuri gets knocked down and you think he's finished and then inevitably he comes back and he wins the fight. There's nothing more than I love than that shit. That shit is so much fun to watch. Yuri Prohaska, I can't wait for UFC 303. And even if he was fighting me in the main event, I'd be watching, I'd be locked in because that's how exciting he is. He makes any fighter, any fight, any fight style super, super entertaining. Has one of the best fights ever with that Yuri and Glover fight where he manages to come back in that fifth round and submit Glover Texera. There's not much more to say about Yuri Prohaska. If you know, you know. One of the most exciting UFC fighters ever. And then heavyweight. Heavyweight's a bit of a dying division, if I'm honest with you. We can't really see that many prospects coming up. We're not getting the title fight that we won at the top. But the man that's looking for that title fight, Tom Aspinall, is saving the division. He is saving the division. He is the saving grace at 265. Because when you see a man, okay, who has an average fight time of 2 minutes and 10 seconds. 2 minutes and 10 seconds is about how long it takes for Tom Aspinall to finish someone. And it's not even like a Johnny Walker situation where he's just getting KO'd, 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 KO'd. He's the one that's, you know, doing the destruction. He's the one that's breaking the noses, breaking the ribs, knocking people out, submitting people inside the first round. This is a guy that is a true finisher of the highest order, of the highest regard. We saw what he did to Volkov, and Volkov looked really, really good last weekend. We saw what he did to Pavlovich on short notice when Pavlovich was like the boogeyman of that heavyweight division. There's probably not going to be a UFC fighter in history that's going to be able to eclipse under that two minutes and 10 seconds mark. Maybe Rob Lee Stespania could have done it, but he doesn't have the skill. Tom Aspinall actually has the skill to do this to the best fighters on the planet over and over and over and over again. It's not somebody who's beating top 20, top 25, top 30 guys. He is beating the best heavyweights on the planet in under two minutes. Like, it's an outrageous that he's a fucking freak of nature. I can't wait to see him at UFC 304. And I'm praying to God we get that John Jones matchup. That is the most exciting fighters by each UFC division. Make sure to like, sub, all their YouTube shit. And I'll catch you boys tomorrow. Peace.